It can't happen here. Hello, my name is Christian Ty Edwards, and I will be playing Doremus Jessup. Hi, everybody. My name is Joy. I'll be playing Lorenda Pike. Hi, my name is Ruth Elizabeth Diaz, and I will be playing David Greenhill. Hi, I'm Megan Safko. I'll be playing Mary Greenhill. Hi, I'm Jeff Basker, and I'll be playing Buzz Windrip. Hello, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Yum, like Zoom, and I'll be playing Chad Ledoux. Hi, I'm Steve Broom. I'll be playing Fowler, Prang, the second corpo, and the immigration officer. Hi, I'm Bob Rosenberg, playing Tasbro and some corpos. I'm Michael Safko, and I will be Commissioner Swan, Mr. Dimmick, Trowbridge, and the Second Guard. Hello, I am Lori Brune. I will be playing Julian, Saracen, and Mike. Hello, I am Krippa Patwarden. I will be playing Clarence, Dan, Mr. Veter, and the First Guard. Hi, I'm Mark McGugan, and I'll be playing Mrs. Veter, Mrs. Whitcomb, a secretary, and a corpo aide. Hi, I'm Erin Clarner. I directed this reading and I will be narrating. Place, United States of America. Time, very soon or never. What's the matter with fishing? Everything's the matter with fishing. There's nothing the matter with fishing. Fishing's a... My, what a view. Fishing is for lazy men. <laughs> lazy, huh? My lord, I'm so glad to be out of the office today. Forget this doggone national convention and have a chance to talk with you. Hope I didn't forget the watermelon pickles. No, there they are. Chance to talk to me? What else do you think you do all day long in the office? Gabbling and talking and playing knock knock and me trying to write about the women's club activities the and receipts for donuts. Recipes and good ones too. <laughs> and you like to have have me gabble to you, don't you? Well I don't. Dragging me all the way up here, you said it wasn't over a mile. And it wasn't. A mile and a half if it's an inch. Mile. And you enjoyed every inch of it with me. I don't know as I did or not. Didn't you? Well, maybe, sort of. But you, but you behave yourself. <laughs> anyway, the corporatives can hardly nominate Buzz Windrip before midnight. Let's hope they never nominate him. Oh, rats. I keep asking you, what's the matter with Windrip? You're always so vague. He may not be any Daniel Webster, but he's a real man of the people. Yes, I know I am vague. So is the whole country. Unemployment, drought, fear of getting dragged into another world war, fear everywhere. Millions tired of disciplining themselves, and along comes a medicine man with the loudest voice in the whole world, and he shouts, if, he'll, if we'll just put ourselves in his hands, our souls and bodies, our little trades and the education of our children, then he'll do a miracle. No, there's only one class that'll hand over responsibility. Slaves. Well, of course, of course, I, uh, I don't know. You, I almost... Here they come. <laughs> Pretty nice grandson I got, anyway. He's darling. Uh. Hello. Gee, you and Mrs. Pike are regular mountain goats. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Gramp for my collection. <laughs> Lovely. What is it? Why, it's a Luna Moth. Come on, Pop. <laughs> Attaboy. Come on, Mom. Good work, old man. <sighs> who the dickens is that with Frank Tasbro? And who are they? Patients of mine. Henry Vita's a farmer down here, and that's his missus. I invited them to join us. And the other's Vita's cousin, Clarence Little, the grocer. You know him. Oh, of course I know him. Mind they're coming. Of course I don't. Mind Aunt Lindy? Don't you call me Aunt Lindy, young man. <laughs> Weighs a ton. Ah. Oh. 
<laughs> the doctor just said we had to come. Nice view. Wonder how much this costs an acre. See, you got the right kind of ketchup. Mm. Chocolate cake. <laughs> Coconut cake. Hair yeah, like this gross hair on your chest. Of course, I forgot oh, the napkin. Oh, I forgot the apple butter. Oh. Yeah, and me, I, I had to turn oh, the ice cream oh. freezer. Why the dickens you this? get an electric freezer? Well, we are Red Rider. Better not monkey with that rifle, son. Your mother's the shot in this family. Lovely uh, view. Please ask me. I'm going to give you the rest of the course. I'm going to give you the rest of the course. I'm going to give you the rest of the course. That's what I always say. Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey? Yeah. Any more news on the radio about the convention? Well, not when I left, but Senator Woodruff is certain to be nominated. I hope not. <laughs> Lorinda, you're a regular communist. <laughs> if you had to run a big textile mill and try to find some mechanic that knew his business, young folks today simply won't learn. <laughs> They've forgotten how to use their legs. <laughs> the way they run around in automobiles and forgotten how to use their heads. <laughs> Senator Woodruff doesn't aim to be any dictator. He just wants folks to be disciplined of their own free will, and if they won't, he'll make them. Look at Julian Falk, the way he's perked up since he put on a corpo uniform. How am I going to make cotton fabrics at a decent profit if every darn sharecropper and railroad employee and mill hand demands hours and wages and God knows what all to suit his own selfish, grasping notions? Yes, sir. What we've got to have is coordination. With one strong man as coordinator. Mm. Bet your life. Something to that, Mr. Tasboro. I don't think I'm such a mean boss, but uh, these young fellows these days, why well, they expect forty, fifty dollars a month and food. Well, personally, I don't much like this idea of any bureau coordinating me. But these days, when you get so many deadbeats... Yes, I know! And just won't keep their houses clean and insist it's because they're poor. Oh, my gracious, yes. You want to see those filthy houses down at Goose Creek. I want to go to Goose Creek. Oh, someday, someday. Now, Frank, I hate to agree with you about anything. Always did. But for once, I guess you're right. Young folks today, they, they get nothing but machine-made music and machine-made drama and machine-made traveling, and they've gotten soft. I know how Lindy thinks about our independent old pioneer forebears, but they didn't believe in a machine age, and we do. So, we've just got to accept a little machine-made discipline, I guess. And that's why my paper has been kind of backing the corpos against Walt Trowbridge and the People's Party. It's, it's, it's not so much that I trust Windrup as that I trust that. Look at it. God's own free, open American country. And this is just one little New England valley. Think of all that's beyond. Arizona deserts, the Mississippi Delta. Richest land on earth, the Oregon forests. Do you know how big Texas is? Big as any three European countries put together. This isn't any one-horse European country that a dictator could get a hold of. No, sir. It's too big. Dictatorship. It can't happen here. No, sir. <laughs> it sure can't. For hundreds of years, my folks have been living on my land. Anybody tried to dictate to me, I just laugh at. Who's that coming? <laughs> it's Jillian in that famous corpo uniform. Boy Scout uniform. Julian! Julian! We win! We win! Bob Winrup's nominated! Through the glass of the door in the front show window, we catch a glimpse of the red brick shops across the street and the citizens milling about on the sidewalk. They're apparently waiting for a patriotic event of some kind. Some of the children have cheap American flags in their hands. How about some laundry soap, Mrs. Whitcomb? We got a special on them, if you take a whole case of it. <laughs> Not today, I'm afraid. I couldn't lug it to the car. They won't let you park on Main Street today because of the parade. <sighs> the parade. Buzz Windrip and his marching clubs keeping cars off Main Street. I'll go to the mayor. Don't know what good it'll do you. People around here won't stand for monkeying with their rights. 
My grandfather didn't fight in the Civil War for nothing. Well, I don't know what this world is coming to. Young folks staying up until half past eleven, thinking you're, thinking you're a tyrant if you tell them to get in at a decent hour. At least the Corpo Marching Clubs stand for discipline. I believe in freedom. Better let the kids stay up than have them bossed all the time. How's Caroline? Oh, her arm's knitting just fine. But you know how children are. Tell her here's a present from the grocery man. Oh, stick candy. Thank you. <sighs> My, there's the parade. You know, I sort of like music and uniforms. <laughs> So did Grandpa, but he don't now in the churchyard. Linda up in prosperity! What's this? The corpus are coming, hurrah, hurrah, the corpus are coming, hurrah, hurrah, and America's flag is nailed up on the moon, and the corpus are coming, hurrah, hurrah. Tin soldiers, drugstore cowboys, boy scouts, yeah, corpos, want to be dictators, dictators, dictators. Jim Nickerson, Corporal Nickerson, deadbeat. How about that 20 bucks you owe me? Deadbeat, corpos, dictators. Noisy little man, aren't you? Who's going to stop me? Perhaps I should introduce myself. Commissioner Swan, Senator Windrip's representative. Mm. Work on him, will you? Might as well get used to it. And careful with those new uniforms. The other corpos back Clarence to the counter. Clumsy but menacing, Clarence is terrified. The corpos are coming, hurrah, hurrah. The corpos are coming, hurrah, hurrah. The corpos are coming to capture New England. The corpos are coming, hurrah, hurrah. A group are gathered at the bay window, watching the parade of the corpos. The corpos are coming, hurrah, hurrah. The corpos are coming, hurrah, hurrah. The corpos are coming to capture New England. The corpos are coming, Hi, hurrah. Look at party of young men. Mighty nice of you to invite me, Doremus. Best place in town to see a parade. I'm mighty glad to have you, Frank. Guess this window is the one thing I've got on a plutocrat like you. This military drill may have its faults, but it does keep the young fellas off the street corners. I tell you, a doctor sees some awful results from all this loafing and unemployment. What I always say is, young fellas with any ability can find something to do, same as I did. Start washing dishes and get to be a great manufacturer like you. Well, why not? Whatever modest wealth I may have made is entirely due to my own unaided enterprise. Quiet, son. Oh, did you know black widow spiders are poisonous? Yes, never saw a case though. Come, this, this drill certainly pulls them together. Young bullies, always squabbling. Now, now, Lindy, maybe they scrap a little like all boys do, but you never heard of the corpos hurting anybody. And you never will. But now you take the lazy workmen, you never hear of them getting pleasure out of doing an honest day's work, no sir. All they holler for is higher wages and shorter hours. Labor unions, they're communists. Can I go to the movies tonight, Dad? I want to see the son of Frankenstein. We're looking at Frankensteins, a whole street of them. No, no, Lindy, don't be a Joan of Arc till you've got a battle. Got one now. Uh, the idea, just because the corpos guards won't let their members run around all night. And make them wash. You don't object to their being tyrannized into washing their necks, do you, Aunt Lindy? Don't call me Aunt Lindy. Of course the corpos can take care of their men. Baby them, and if Buzz, Win Buzz Windrup gets elected, they'll baby the whole country in prison. Nonsense. The people of the United States will decide for themselves whether they want corporalism and efficiency, or the People's Party in Walt Trowbridge's oratory. And soldiers, soda counter heroes, trying to grab the dictatorship. Good afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Jessup, this is Commissioner Swan from Boston, our new corporal party manager from Vermont. And your cruel boss, young fellow, my lad. 
<laughs> oh, that's right, sir. You were the first person in town the commissioner wanted to see, Mr. Jessup. Mm -hmm. well, have a chair. Sit down, Julian. Julian retires to the back of the room where he stands at attention. Uh, we've been more or less supporting the corpos. No one knows it better than I. It might surprise you to know we read your editorials at the Boston headquarters. Uh, do sit down, Julian. At rest, Falk. Uh, this is Miss Lorinda Pike. She edits my society page. Are you a corpo? <laughs> I try to be, <laughs> Captain. Oh, I'm not a captain. I'm Daniel Boone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Boone. <laughs> I'm going to explore Brazil. Uh, Daniel Boone never explored Brazil. He's going to. Uh, skip out and play, General. Parade is about over. Uh, I want to go to the movies. Eat it. Okay. Okay. Toy machine guns at Davy's age? There's your corpo influence. Better than dolls, ma'am. Uh, don't you worry about that boy. He'll be a scholar I wanted him to be. Uh, Dr. Greenhill, uh, my son-in-law, uh, commissioner, uh, leaving with me here since uh, my wife passed away. Certainly is a pleasure to know you, Commissioner. They offered me the medical officership in the corpo unit here, but we're building a new wing on the hospital. Uh, and this is Mr. Tasbro, our chief manufacturer. I suppose you've already dropped in on my little textile mill, Commissioner. Too bad I was away. Oh, sorry. I haven't had the chance yet. Why, it's the biggest single industry in the county. And I've been ordering, well, you might say urging, the hands to vote corpo. Splendid. I understood you were coming. Well, here I am, my dear fellow. And I was all ready for you. In fact, <clears throat> I had my party contribution already. Here it is, my boy. One thousand bucks. One thousand bright gold dollars. Error, I'm afraid, sir. I'd understood your quota was five thousand. Five thousand? So... I think we'd rather not have you as a contributor at all. We'd thought of you as one of the inner circle, but uh, we don't care for anyone who isn't passionate about our idea. All right, sir. Just as you feel about it. That's just the way we feel about it. Well, well, I can't fool around any longer. On the job. Be good, all of you. Uh, my wife, Commissioner. She's the best corpo in this whole neck of the woods. Great believer in training. Indeed I am. I hope David will grow up to be a corpo. Dad, where is my wild Indian? Out oh, playing. He's all right. Wasn't it a nice parade? I saw it from upstairs. So sorry. Must dash down to the grocery before it closes. Our maid would have the afternoon off to see the parade. Honestly, I don't know what's come over our servants. No gratitude. And the wages they demand. Well, they deserve all the wages they get. And... You had to wash the dishes for a lot of... Uh, all well... right, you Abraham Lincolns, Jessup and Pike, the friends of the Forgotten Man. Ah, that's our show. The League of Forgotten Men will declare for Buzz Windrip. I'll leave you to fight it out. Goodbye, Commissioner. I'll take the Fliver Fowler. Afraid to leave it for reds, like Aunt Lindy. Don't call me Aunt Lindy. Okay, Aunt Lindy. <sighs> Black magic, that's what it is. Uh, so the League of Forgotten Men will support Windrup. You think... It's you think that... I mean, I don't see how the League and Pastor Prank can fail to declare for Windrup. It must mean something when Windrup makes his first pilgrimage to the pastor's little brown church in the Vale and they broadcast together. Who knows? This afternoon may be as historic as the Battle of Lexington. Hmm. We must all listen in, especially you, ma'am. So you'll get a better idea of Senator Winthrop's real passion for justice. I will. If they can convince me, all right. Sometimes Buzz jests. But he jests so that his heart will not break. Some of his followers may be humbled. Oh. Shad, don't be so noisy. Oh, I can't help it. You? Ever in the army? No, sir. Military training? Militia, sir. What rank? Corporal, sir. You the fellow that organized the Goose Creek gang? Yes, sir. 
All right. Husky hired men you've got there. <laughs> yes. Little cocky, though. Feels superior to domestic work. We only took him on because he begged us. Made a god-awful failure of a turkey farm. Yeah, that's what Shad needs. Uh, Shad? Uh, Shad Ledoux, that's his name. All he needs is a slight operation on his head. Amputation. <laughs> I should say, a capitectomy. <laughs> oh, no, I ought to fire him. But I've been doing kind of a little social experiment. Training him to be pretty uh, near as polite as the average Neanderthal man. <laughs> well, you failed. Well, I certainly hate to miss that broadcast, but I'm due at the hospital. So long. Delighted to meet you, Commissioner. Mighty glad the corporal sent us a gentleman. Uh, say, can I give you a lift? No, thanks. Young Falk has his little car. <laughs> and we must be going. Oh, uh, stay and listen to the broadcast. Oh, thanks so much. But I must listen to it with my staff. It might surprise you to see the inspiration we get from the chief. Windrup's the born leader. <laughs> and that's what we need. Oh, desperately. The people are soft, and think nothing but what they call freedom. Freedom to shoot off their mouths. Freedom to shoot off your mouth is an American tradition. That's not your ancestors' tradition. Not the tradition of your father, the old minister. How did you know my father was a minister? If this nation is not regalvanized into the spirit of 76, any foreign power could walk in and subject every one of us to slavery. We did a little subjecting ourselves, Nicaragua. Nicaragua is a case in point. The Corpos intend to have scientific treaties with Central and South America. Oh, Corpos intend everything. They'll tell the industrialists they'll stop all the strikes. They tell the workers' unions will be sacred. They tell the well-to-do they'll lower taxes. And they tell the poor they'll have 2500 a year when they're 60. And now, now, Lindy, that's unfair. Downright unsporting in a political campaign to remember all the political speeches and see what they add up to. It is not, Mr. Commissioner. Can you reconcile all of your on-the-other-hand business? Yes. Hitherto, the American government has been utterly wasteful. That wishy-washy monstrosity called a liberal democracy must stop. We don't want any more congressmen pretending to represent the people when they're only out for their own glory. We're going to make Congress responsible to one man. Call him dictator, if you insist, afraid of a word. I am of that word. Uh, lots of people being killed by it all over the world. Death may be better than slavery to Europe. Well, upon my word. No, he's a nice fellow. He doesn't believe all this one man stuff. Maybe. Well, I must go too. Leaves all faded. Fall. <laughs> Makes me feel old. No more picnics for us this year, Doremus. Nope, guess not. Well, plenty more picnics next year. Who knows where we'll be next year? Will spring ever come again? Uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, a note. Uh, the commissioner just scribbled it in the car. It's not for you, Mr. Jessup. It's, it's for Shad. Bye. Well, Shad's coming up in the world, getting messages by official courier. Shad! The Shad! What do you want? Letter for you. Shad is just the kind that'll be bossing all of us if the Corpos win. Anytime Shad can boss me. Uh, uh, Mary? I'm. I'm all right now. Safe home. Where is Davy? Outside playing around. What is it? Something horrible. I went to Clarence Little's grocery. He's been killed an hour ago. The pavement was all smeary. I talked to Charlie Betts, your reporter. He said the corpos had done it. Good lord, I'll call the office. Uh, uh, 41, hello. Informer? Mr. Jessup speaking. Let me speak to Charlie. Hello? Uh, Charlie? What about this Clarence Little business? Davy? Davy? I want you to come in now, dear. Aw, gee. We were just playing corpos and robbers. I want you to come in. There's, 
there's so many strangers in town today. Come now, I'll tell you a story. No. Nah. Thunder. Oh, gee. No, 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 don't wire it. Telephone it to the Associated Press. Hustle! Poor Clarence. Got killed, all right. Charlie's not sure the corpos did it. Or, uh, there, there was a row in the store. And, uh, anyway, it's, it's big news. First killing anywhere in the country in this election. You must keep it the last killing. Listen, maybe a crazy idea, but Senator Windrup must be in Zenith right now at the Little Brown Church, ready to broadcast. Maybe he is halfway decent, like the man Swan claimed. You've simply got to telephone Windrup, get him to say something on the radio, so even if it was his gang that killed Clarence, they'll never do it again. How preposterous. I don't care. It's your duty. Happened in your town. You're the editor. In the first place, I, I could never get him. Every blame politician in Zenith will be on his tail. And, and if I could, he'd think it was sheer nerve. Might as well call the King of England. Oh, I suppose so. You're like the rest. You think I'm just a cranky old maid sticking her nose in everybody's business. The town crank. They laugh at me. Now I suppose you will. I will not. And nobody else does. Whole town knows you're a saint. If you want Buzz Windrick called, he gets called. Toll line? Toll line. Fort Beulah, 103 speaking. Person to person call. I want to speak personally to Senator Windrip. W-I-N-D-R-I-P. Or to his secretary at, at the Little Brown Church in the Vale, Zenith. They must have some kind of a phone there. Little Brown Church in the Vale, yes, New York. Yes, Miami, I'll connect you with the secretary. Secretary to Miami calling, Little Brown Church in the Vale. Secretary Nine, Seattle calling. Yes, Topeka, oh yes, Topeka, I'll get you a secretary. Yes, San Simeon, right away. Little Brown Church in the Veil, Fort Beulah, Vermont. Yes, Fort Beulah, I'll see if I can connect you with Pastor Prang's own private secretary. He'll try to get the message through to Sen Senator Windrip. Secretary 8, Fort Beulah calling. I don't know, just somebody in Vermont. Jansen? Yes, sir. Uh, right side of the mic, about uh, two feet up stage, the Spanish Episcopal throne. N not the one I bought in France, but the Spanish one. Check. Senator Windrup and his secretary, Mr. Sranson, have just arrived, Pastor. One, one moment, one moment. Light man, uh, come up on your, your ambers and, uh, and dim your blues. Okay, Pastor. Well, that's better. A little more amber. Who's going to see it, Pastor? God sees it. Senator Bazelius Windrup. Cooperative Party Candidate for President of the United States. Memos for you, sir. And the Kidglove element in the People's Party continually return to their favorite charge against me. That I am a redneck, a mucker, just a common man. Since they know that I have won every important law case I have ever fought, including some before those high and mighty belly coats, the justices of the Supreme Court, they claim that when he appears before some August tribunal, Buzz Windrip doesn't wear a dress suit with a velvet collar, but just plain ordinary blue jeans. Well, they're right. A plain man, darn near as plain and common as Abe Lincoln or that old Virginia hit farmer, George Washington that when he chased the Redcoats from the land, half his troops did it by golly with a pitchfork. Yes, sir. If in my hands be placed the sacred obligations of the presidency, I shan't be able to conduct it one bit 
better than such poor white trash as Washington, Lincoln, Andy Jackson, and Warren Gamaliel Harding. And cross my heart, as we used to say when I was a little one-gallish shaver among the cornfields, I have not bribed these papal party sissies to elect me by their highbrow revelation of my hickishness. And so this matter of humble worth brings me to the question of my foreign policy. And have I got one, my enemies ask. You bet your life. If there's one thing I haven't got anything but, it's a clear, ringing, traditional American slant on foreign policies. America is the one and only country in the world of which it can be said that she has never entered into an unjust or unnecessary war and never lost one. Right in the beginning, when our glorious forebears first landed here, the treacherous redskins attacked our humble settlements and we had to drive them off. So now we ought to go forth into the great councils of state, not asking for anything, but telling them. And meanwhile, I intend to build up an adequate defense. And the least America can contemplate with her peculiar mission in the world is an army equal to any other two armies in the world? And that is, we must have a great big spring house cleaning in our diplomatic corps and replace all these denatured cookie pushers by a bunch of real Americans with hair on their chests. Hair on their brains. Hush. But all my policies, foreign and domestic, are based on just one principle. To scientifically help the downtrodden to become the equals of any Shakespeare or any money-wallowing international Jewish banker that ever lived. And I would end here with farewell, my neighbors. Neighbor to a rattlesnake. Except for a memorandum that has just been handed to me and which I have had to ponder even while I have been talking to you. To my tragic horror, I find that not one hour ago, you will read it in your papers tomorrow, but I'm going to tell the myriad millions of you before then a most unfortunate occurrence occurred in the beautiful little city of Fort Beulah, Vermont. A very fine, substantial merchant of that city was fatally injured in a scuffle, and my enemies are trying to place the blame upon the corpos. I have a secret information of what did happen, and it entirely exonerates the corpos. But if I did not know the truth, if any corpo in any way were to blame, I would cast him forth if it cost me my last follower. For if any harm be done unto the least of these, verily it was done unto... Hey, I want to hear the rest. Leave it off. He certainly, certainly did all he could. All he's going to do. Back again. Got another love letter from Shad? No, sir. It's for you this time. But it's from Commissioner Swan. Dear Mr. Jessup, we shall be honored if you will accept the enclosed appointment as honorary corporative subcommissioner for Beulah County. There are no duties involved except your expression of approval for what we are endeavoring to do. I beg to remain, sir, your humble servant. E. Swan. Hmm. A little too fancy for me. Fancy? Looks like the sons and daughters of I will arise. But it's nothing so funny. It's meant as a future bribe. In case there should be any more trouble, like the murder of Clarence Little. Oh, we don't know it was a murder. It was an accident! The commissioner was all broken up about it. He investigated right away. You know... Mr. Little, he did drink too much. What happened was, he got to scuffling with some fellows, and one of them pushed him. 
he fell down and, and hit his head on the counter. That's what happened. <sighs> Probably was. Uh, Lindy, I, I ought to accept this appointment. If, if some of the younger element in the corpos tend to be rowdy, all the more reason why I should take part. Uh, I can be a good influence. You can only influence a machine gun from one end of it. Uh, quit making the corpos out a, a bunch of Frankensteins. Isn't Julian here one? And we've known him since he was so high. That's what worries me. I'm astonished. A nice boy like you running around playing tin soldier and after getting such a nice Dartmouth college education. Why don't you get yourself a good, sweet, wholesome girl? Girl. Though I wouldn't give anything for one. But Julian. Though any young man without a rich father can afford to even treat a girl to a Coca-Cola these days. Oh, they told me if I did well in college, there'd be a good job waiting for me. Well, I did go to college. I got honors. And they were the last thing I got. I begged for a job kind of job. You did work, Julian. <laughs> I've worked exactly four months in during the past year, and that's better than most of my classmates. Youth today isn't asking for a cinch or looking for glory. Youth is yelling for a job, and the corporals will find one for me. They'll tell me what to do, and they'll feed me. They'll shake off this bungling democracy it, and order things so that we'll get a living. When that happens, I'll get a sweet, wholesome girl and stop playing Romeo to a vacant balcony. We're not bandits. We're realists. We're through sitting around being parlor pinks. We're working together behind Buzz Windrift, the man on horseback. I want my time, I'm quitting. Well, I don't entirely dislike the notion, but it's a little inconvenient. You said you longed to stay with us all winter. Hell with that! I want my time. Oh, you chuck it. Not going to try and hold out on my dough, are you? Certainly not. It's a pleasure. Julian, take that suitcase out to the bus stop. But for the gall, I got to... Take got to your... do a lot of things. Do my eyes deceiveth me, or artest thou a corpo private? What has that got? Remember the little billy ducks you brought me from Swamp? He's made me a sergeant of carbos on full time. Take that grip out. Bye, Papa. So long, Aunt Lindy. Now you two baddies keep out of the bushes. Well, say it. way to earn a living. Two hours sleep. Say, I wish the guys that say I want to be some kind of phony dictator could travel on this trip with us. Why say, these dictators live in a big castle and sleep till 10 a.m. and have a flock of cuties to bring them breakfast on gold plates, French omelets with fancy sauce. But on this trip, we got time for about one meal a day, and it's always old Mrs. Pullman Southern Style Hatch. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, folks like Lee Saracen here were wrong when they thought this trip was to educate the people about Buzz. No, it's me that got educated. What grand people I've met been meeting. 50,000 Iowa farmers in one inspiring throng to protest against the wastefulness of our so-called representative government. Citrus farmers and uh, growers in Golden, Florida. A great, magnificent procession of miners in Michigan. 
umpteen million clerks and stenographers the whole length of Broadway, New York, from the Battery to pretty near the North Pole. And now you, the maple growers and dairymen and merchants of the sacred old state of Vermont, the state of Horace Greeley. But there's one great big but, my friends. Everywhere I have found the true American people divided, kept apart by the politicians who in their insensate selfishness befool the very constituents who have placed them on their tinsel thrones. If you honor me with your votes, I shall not be president. No, I mean that, not president at all. But the telephone central through whom every man in this great land, be he Vermont farmer or Seattle ship captain, can get in touch with every other man so that for the first time since 1861, we can be joined in one unified nation that will sweep the world. Woo! Woo! You've got to get out of this. Eh? Just talk to Clarence Little's widow. She's dying. The corpos murdered Clarence, made a shutter trap. Dictator, foully do they misuse and bandy words who assert that plain Buzz Windrup would ever desire to dictate anything to anybody. If one among you believe this, let him hear right now. Beaten Strike with me blackjack. down. See, I bear my breast to the bullets of the assassin. Stuck a knife in his back. But no, that shall never be. For I only long to love and serve every American citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Woo. editorial sanctum of the Fort Beulah Informer contains two desks and is as expressive of connubial bliss as twin beds. Miranda is seated at hers typing with an efficient two fingers. Dreamus is at his own trying to edit a proof piece. What I'd like to see you say in your editorial is the government may have to monkey with agriculture but it's got to keep its hands off business. Here's Windrup to be in an office a month and have the big industrialists seen any gratitude? That was a fine move the government made when it solved the unemployment problem, based all the idle bombs into work camps, rented them to private industry at 75 cents a day. It was peonage. But the point is, even with wages way down, I'm not making any profits. Taxes are terrible. A new tax on industry every five minutes. Interference from inspectors? Worst bunch of racketeers I ever saw. Been making you hire a lot of corpos? <laughs> and none of them know anything. I know. Didn't the corpos hound me to fire Charlie Betts and give his job to that kid, Julian Falk? Doggone embarrassing. Charlie had been with me for years. And Julian was a neighbor. Worked out all right. And Charlie had a little money. I wish Julian knew how to spell, though. <laughs> Lorinda raises one of the windows. Scat! You boys let that kid alone. Get out of the alley or I'll chase you out. Yeah, you and who else? Old, old maid? Old maid, old maid. I'll come down there and put the fear of God in you. I'll go shoot yourself. You won't do nothing. I'm Shad the Deuce cousin. Why, you look. Beat it. I'll knock your heads together. Like how you will who said so. Look at him run. Dan Wilkes is better than a whole police squad. Poor little devils. Let him go, Dan. <sighs> that was Dan Wilkes, my foreman. Bunch of those Goose Creek kids. Whole slew of them in town since Shad enlisted their dads in the corpos. A lot of riffraff. No respect for their elders. Like you and I were brought up to. Well, I hope you have the courage to use the facts I've given you. Don't pussyfoot. Business is being strangled. We'll see. I made some notes. And I suppose you'll be doing a separate piece about Mrs. Tazro's tea at the country club, and not just stick it in with the unimportant society items. Unimportant? Unimportant? I don't know the word. Well, I'm just trying to help you folks by giving you something to fill the newspaper. 
See you soon. Well, say it. <laughs> Telling you to have courage after the way you've criticized the corpos and all that you've done? That's what an editor's for. Wonder if these schools of journalism give the bright boys instruction on how to smile while getting kicked. I haven't the nerve. Nerve, my dear. I know about the anonymous notes. Threats. <laughs> I knew somebody had been prowling through my desk. Don't you know that's sacred, young woman? All those notes are probably just a joke. Some clown like Shad. Maybe those kids in the alley. The men in masks that tortured the Massachusetts editor weren't kids. Oh, well, what the dickens? Lindy. You know how anxious I am to have you here, but, but just the same. Been thinking it over, and uh, I want you to resign. Then there is danger. Hell no, but, but you're getting jumpy. You'll be telling the truth one of these days. You want me to quit now? Well, yes. AP Flash from Washington. I'm waiting for the follow-up. One hundred members of Congress and six members of the Supreme Court have been put under protective arrest. I can't believe it. Things like that can't happen in America. It all did happen. The day Buzz Windrup was inaugurated, when he armed the corpos. God, I wish I could get the rest of this story from Washington. Something's holding it up. That means national censorship. Protective censorship. That's why you've got to get out of this, honey. I won't. You've got to. No, I won't. Please go home. I don't want you here. Doremus Daniel Jessup, I've never heard in my life such a wicked lie. Never. You can fire me and fire me and fire me and I'll always be right here at my desk at 11 o'clock every single morning. You will not. you never been less than 15 minutes late and you never will be. Dan. Dan. Dan! Hold your horses. I'm coming. We'll run this editorial after all. We'll do no, su no such a damn thing. You make up that page right now and make this the lead editorial. Can't. What do you mean, can't? I mean, I've been reading through it again, and we're not going to have no such a piece in any paper I make up. Talking about corpo machine guns? Want to have them turned on us? Are you scared? Who, me? The celebrated wrestler. Scared? Me? Listen. I'm so scared, I ruined myself. Remember that editor out in Kansas two days ago? The corpos tied him to the press and set fire to it. That's why I dumped this galley. They didn't burn up printers, did they? Only the editor. Hell, I wasn't thinking of the editor. I was thinking of the press. I'll bet they took the paint off it. And that's a nice press we got downstairs. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to try and reset this editorial myself. <sighs> all right, all right. If you're bound and determined to be a hero, I suppose I'll have to be one. 19 years now you've been getting your way. 18. Seems like 80. Besides, I may be able to repair a linotype after the corpos massage it with crowbars but not after a liberal intellectual has been fiddling with it. Hey, boss, there's a big corp of lummox to see you. Don't say I didn't warn you. Salute, private. What's this the boys got on? I know, it, it, it is silly, but Julian Falk gave it to him. Imagine, bought it out of his first week's salary here. Well, thank God, for the last 20 years, about all, the, the only uniform you ever saw in America was the Salvation Army or the Kiss for Coolness ice cream vendor. Ah, oh, I like my uniform. Of course. Great men have worn uniforms, but you know a fellow can be a soldier of science, too. A soldier of life instead of death. Like microbe hunters, I was reading to you. Mm-hmm, you bet. Going to see Fowler? No, I was, but he's so worried. I guess you'll have to let me have some shopping money. About ten dollars? 
I didn't want to tell you, but of course the paper will get it anyway. Dad, it's the most dreadful thing the Corpos have done. I thought it was pretty bad when they started interfering with you. Of course the press ought to have freedom, but now they've laid their hands on medicine. And it had come today when Fowler's in the hospital, terribly worried because he has a case with a persistent hemorrhage after a tonsillectomy. Do you know what Commissioner Swan has done? He put in charge of the hospital over Fowler's head that horrible gland treatment quack whom Fowler got run out of the County Medical Association. Will you protest in the paper? Will you? Yes, I'll try to, if there's any paper left to protest in. Give me a quarter, Grandpa. And what do you want a quarter for, General? Buy another cannon at the five and ten. Gee, I only... <laughs> a cannon! Guns! Brass bands! Yes, of course, it's too much. I won't have you get any more soldiers. Uh... Skip along now. I got your blamed editorial reset. What the? Machinery stopped? Outside, you. Swan, do uh, you have anything to do with that machinery stopping? Almost everything, I should think. Uh, do be calm, my dear fellow. We're both civilized human beings, and surely we should be able to discuss any differences we might have. Murder by machine gun. Very pretty alliteration. I congratulate you, Doremus. My name is Jessup. <laughs> no, no. It wouldn't be. Not between friends, would it, Doremus? I'll call you Doremus, and you just call me... Commissioner. Jessup, I came here to raise hell with you about your seditious criticisms of the corporative government. But I hadn't expected anything so beastly as this new affront. Instead of just giving you counsel, I'm going to give you a trial. Sergeant Ledoux! Yes, sir! Station a couple of privates by the door. Yes, sir! You sit here at the desk and take notes. According to a new decree, my dear Doremus, oh, I know the gnawing curiosity of you pressmen, I'm not only in political and military command of this district, but also I have the power to hold court-martial, with myself as judge, prosecutor, and defense. And you'd be simply thrilled to see how the three of me agree on major issues. So now... Oh, I'm so sorry. Do have a cigarette. I don't care much for this cat-and-mouse game. This is a trial. Where are your charges? Charges? Oh, my only aunt. Just trifling things. High treason and incitement to murder and airy trifles like that. You know, the usual dreary legal tidbits. And all so easily gotten rid of if you would just remember your venerable years and your responsibilities to your family. It would be too sick-making if anything happened to them, you know. And played along with us. I would simply adore explaining some of our secret plans in that case, you'd see such a new light. Jessup couldn't see a new light if it was on the end of his nose. Ah! Much, my dear sergeant. And of course, Doremus, I do want ever so delicately to urge you to give me a list of all the people whom you know to be opposed to the corporative administration. Spying? Just so. It could be. God, Swan, don't try to impress me with your fancy phrases out of highbrow detective stories I can read, too. Not really. I shouldn't have fancied so from your proofreading. But do, I pray you, try to show a little more formality at this trial. For, curiously enough, it is a trial. For treason! One really ought to take you out and shoot you. <laughs> oh, yes. One has the power to. But... It might be more amusing to keep you here. So, I announce as my official decision, oh, quite official, my dear Doremus, that from now on, the editor of this paper is to be Sergeant Ledoux.
Shad. Why, my dear fellow, I'm picking him because you're old and loving co-workers. We do hope you'll go on writing, a playing with the many-colored word. But Sergeant Ledoux will tell you precisely what you are to write and how to change it afterward. Karima starts to get up and do something violent. The corpos at the door step forward, but as Shad roughly pushes Karimas back into his chair, the corpos go no further. And, if he complains, a little instruction with... Juan, I've had enough. One man is going to protest against your corpo swinishness. I shut up. I want to keep myself clear for my medical work. You've taken that from me. But now you've started on Jessup. You're entirely mistaken, my dear doctor. I've been misrepresented. Who phoned you? None of your business. Fall back there, will you? But when Chad falls back, he is just behind Fowler, and Chad loosens the 44 automatic in his holster. I came here to offer Mr. Jessup... Grab him! This comrade bores me. Take the bastard out in the alley and shoot him, will you? Hello? Oh, no, Mr. Jessup can't come to the telephone just at the moment. Oh, this is just a friend of his. It's your daughter. She wants to know about some man the corpos have placed as superior over her good husband, Dr. Greenhill. Oh, yes. Mr. Jessup is here, but he doesn't seem to be feeling very well. The crack of several rifles firing together is heard from down in the alley. Followed by the single crack of Shad's pistol. Ah, clumsy shooting to need the pistol. Uh, no, Mrs. Greenhill, I'm afraid your father wasn't able to do anything for him. Behind the desk in the president's office, there is a tall French window through which may be seen a sentry walking his post on the terrace outside. He is in the uniform not of the corpos, but of the regular U.S. Marines. Saracen is playing the piano. Hmm. What do you call that piece, Mr. Secretary? Oh, some Chopin. Oh, sure. I know. I just couldn't think of the name of it. Uh... Say, there's a hymn I want you to play for me. It was my old mother's favorite. Uh, trouble with the young generation today is they aren't brought up with any respect for religion. That's why we have such a hell of a time putting the fear of God into these young corpos. Well, well, why don't you play it? You didn't tell me the name of it. Uh, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, sorry. Afraid I don't know that one. Oh, God almighty. Can't I depend on anybody? No cooperation. No loyalty. Didn't I tell you to learn the whole goddamn hymn book? Do you know what your duties are, you swine? To do just exactly what I tell you to. You think you're Secretary of State. I made you and I can unmake you right now, this minute. You think you're necessary to me? Nobody's necessary to me. I'm the President of the United States. By God, I am the United States. <clears throat> Sorry, Buzz. I'll learn it. And Buzz, do you mind if I say something? I know what burdens you're carrying. Yeah, whole damn country traitors to me. And I don't mind your blowing up with me, but don't do it with anybody else around. I know. Been talking like a crazy man. Forget it. Everything's got on my nerves since the maniac tried to shoot me. Hmm. Sure that Marine is okay? Oh, sure. And careful of too much vengefulness. You have everybody shot the minute you're suspicious. 
Yet less than four months ago, you were worried stiff when the corpos killed their first man. Remember? Yeah. Fort Beulah, Vermont. I used to think about that place and wonder what kind of fool it was got done in and whether he's got any neighbors that have the guts to kick. Probably not. Could such people possibly matter? An anthill. But even so, they might start swarming. Sometimes I think you're beginning to wish the American people had only one throat to cut. Be careful. Oh, why can't you see the funny side of things? Like, like when we started in politics. Remember that private burlesque show down in Natchez? And that red-headed broad that had to have her own lace pillow with her? <laughs> I don't get any laughs like that anymore. I thought it would be more fun to be president. First American dictator in history, by God. I used to imagine myself coming right in here and slapping Abe Lincoln's feet off the desk and putting mine up on it. But nobody seems to like me anymore, even you. When I was a kid on the farm, I didn't get along very well with the other kids. I swore I'd make them pay for my being lonely. And I got popular. I climbed to this high office, and now I'm lonelier than I ever was. Lonelier than any man ever was. Oh, well. You stick with me and... Good God, look at the time. Think I hired you to stick around and chew the rag? Uh-oh, you're, you're quite right. I must skip over to the State Department. This is the State Department. And all the departments there are. Your job is to stay here and help me. What's my appointment now? Oh, I'll, I'll ring your secretary. You're my secretary, by God. Oh, very well. There's the, uh, the press conference. Let them wait, the dirty spies. I don't need the newspapers any longer. They need me. Uh, old Senator Lutheran of California about the fruit picker strike. Do I have to see him? Mm, shouldn't th think so. <laughs> we had all oh, the strike what do you think I'd yesterday. better do about them? <laughs> Send them flowers. Flowers are cheap in California. Huh? <laughs> we'll do that. Glad I knocked your ears down, Lee. You're getting funnier already. <laughs> You're always an inspiration to humor. A uh, uh, Mr. Tasbro representing the Northern New England textile manufacturers, I believe. I uh, don't suppose you want to... Uh... What? What? Hell yes, of course. Uh, always glad to see industrialists. Shoot them in. Come in, come in, Brother Tasbro. Awful kind of you to see me, Mr. President. I just brought a few practical suggestions from some manufacturers. I know how busy you are here in the White House and- uh, uh, This isn't the White House. This is the People's House. Say, that's a swell idea. Just thought of it. Put it down, Lee. The name White House is to be changed from today to the People's House. Sit down, Brother Tasbro. I'm particularly gratified to have the cooperation of really big responsible men of the country, like yourself. I hope everything's going well with you in New England. Uh, labor trouble's all cleared up? Absolutely, Mr. President, thanks to you. Not to me, but to Mr. Secretary of State Saracen over here. Meet Mr. Saracen, the greatest secretary since Alexander Hamilton. Didn't realize I'd have the honor to. A and what can I do for you, Brother Tasbro? Well, I was deputed to come here by a group of high-class citizens, several of them millionaires, to put before you our feeling that we simply must have relief from so much taxation and all these inspectors. I myself, why? I voluntarily contributed $10,000 to the Corpo Campaign Fund, though I was asked for only 1000 Ah, that's the spirit! So we feel, after all, I represent what you might call the solid moneyed interests. And money still holds the whip hand, even in politics. Yes, we've got to admit that, Brother Tasbro. 
Money is... I'm sorry to interrupt, sir, but there is an important visitor, Pastor Prang of Zenith. He wants to see you immediately. Oh, yes. I'm expecting the dear old fellow. You won't mind if I let the pastor come in for a minute, will you? You've probably heard him on the radio. I should say I have. He's Mrs. Tasbro's favorite artist. But probably you'd like me to step out. No, no. I want you to see how zealously we listen to criticism so that uh, you can take word of it back to the big industrialists. Well, well, pastor. How's the humble brown church in the humble old veil? I have not come here for any small talk. I've come here to denounce the wolves in sheep's clothing, whom, to my eternal shame, I helped lead to the helpless flock. I criticized this wicked and adulterous administration on the radio, and now I find that your federal radio commission has actually barred me off the air. And members of my league are being herded into labor camps like ordinary tramps. You're to strive and to kill the soul of America that once marched onto freedom under the leadership of old John Brown. They command our ministers of the gospel to preach the glories of an administration supported by scoundrels cloaked in the sanctity of the American flag. They dominate the motion pictures. You're about four and a half months too late, my clerical brother. I can't use you anymore. I'm only going to use four-minute speakers in the war. Huh? Certainly, the war with Mexico. About 18 months from now, all in the lovely autumn weather. We're at peace with Mexico. So far. Not even a border incident. Border incidents will be plentifully provided. You shall not plunge America into war to increase your unholy power. Saracen has begun playing Onward Christian Soldiers on the piano. Always glad to have your skilled advice, Parson. But I'd be careful how I talk treason. That's what the drumhead court marshals would call it. Preferring a lot of greasers and Jews and God knows what to 100% per Protestant Americans. You stop that sacrilege. You're worse than he. Oh, thanks, Padre. But I won't have you shot or even tortured. I'll always love you for the best laugh I ever had in my life when you worked so hard to get me elected in that phony broadcast, Captain. This man, Frank is the name, I believe has been bleeding too loud. Stick him in jail where none of the good Americans he's been offending by the subversive doctrines can get at him. We've got to protect free speech. Take the fool out. Yes, sir. And if there are any inequities, sir? He's had a nervous breakdown. Stick him in the insane asylum and keep him there incommunicado. Very well, sir. You can't do that. Somewhere in you, there must be some grains of mercy. Why, Parson, you'll have a nice little room and you can preach or say, Get a deaf soldier you can depend on. Stone deaf. I don't know, sir. There must be a deaf veteran in the soldier's home. <clears throat> well, send for him. He's to be the pastor's guard. Prang, you can preach your head off and pray your head off, but you'll never have any audience but this deaf old coot. And golly, how you've loved audiences. And you said you wouldn't torture him. <laughs> Lord, our God, shield of the innocent. Uh, take him out. Raven already. It be thy will that thy ministers shall suffer for their own most grievous blindness, yet in our fair absence guard our flocks in thy name. And now you, you stinking little stooge, you see how scared I am of the Manufacturers Association or anybody else? You go back home to your association, and next Tuesday, I want you back here with bearer bonds for $15 million. 20. That's right, bonds for $20 million. Next Tuesday, remember, before 5 p.m. We'll be paupers. Should have thought of that before the election. 
You paid 10,000 bucks campaign fund for discipline. Well, you're getting it. Mr. Tasbro didn't even hear the definition of dictatorship. Up to a certain point, it's government by capitalists like you through hired bullies. After that, it's government by bullies like me through capitalists. See? Now get it. Say, we ought to make twice the money we do. You meet such crumbs when you're a dictator. Anything else, sir? Nope. Nothing. Say, where's that sentry? I'm afraid he deserted his post, sir. Uh, deserted? Why? He said when he heard the Secretary of State jazzing that him, he saw red. The whole guard is acting very peculiarly. You don't mean mutiny. They're all Marines. A peculiar mutiny, sir. They've started to hum. And their offenses, their officers can't make them stop. To hum? Yes, sir. Like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The damn it, Captain! I'll have his hide! Listen! <laughs> On one wall is a poster for a corpo meeting, and there is an imposed poster of President Windrip draped in bunting. Lieutenant Shad Ledoux is seated at Dremus' former desk. He is painfully reading a piece of copy. How about Dan Wilgus, Lieutenant? Hush up! I'm thinking. I guess that'll do now. Your account of the Corporal Council was all right, only not enthusiastic enough. You know what I mean, enthusiastic. If you stick around me, and you'll learn what real guys like to read. I wanted to ask you about Dan Wilgus. What about him? He tells me you fired him. We don't need him. He's no good. I'm afraid we do need him, Shad. He's the only experienced printer you've left me. So you don't like the way I run things? I'm just trying to say we have to have somebody that understands printing. Well, if you're so in love with that ink slinger, you'll get him back. The guy's got three kids and he, he ain't saved any money. No time at all. He'll be in a labor camp. And then we can hire him from the government for 75 cents a day. You ain't a very good businessman, Jessup. Meanwhile, if we fall down on the posters, Swan will blame me. Commissioner Swan. Yes, Commissioner Swan, I mean. He might even blame you. All right, then. I'll show you I'm a good guy. You can keep Wilgus, but I don't want you pestering me anymore now. Thanks. And say, me and Swan de decided to print nothing about Francis Tasbrow killing himself in that New York hotel. All right, but he was a good friend. It's nice of you to feel... Say, since I've been so nice to you, who handles your insurance? Judge Jarvis. There's a fella blue in town peddling policies. He fixed me up with coverage on, coverage on my new coop. Real reasonable. Mr. Dimmick, his name is, from Albany. I made an appointment for him to come and see you. Splitting commissions with you. Any skin off your back? Dimmick! Come in. Make yourself at home. Jessup, this is Mr. Dimmick. From Albany. How do you do, Mr. Jessup? I'd like to analyze your present insurance for you. Uh, no charge, no obligation. Guess I'll go over to the Bijou and shoot myself a little pool. Try and get along without me. Do a little thinking for yourself. But if anything important comes up, you can phone me, Jessup. Bye. Bye. Are you forgetting something? I have plenty of insurance. Oh, not my kind. Every kind I need. 
I represent an old line company founded by George Washington. I'm selling liberty insurance. I don't know what kind of scheme you and Shad Ledoux are cooking up, but I'm not interested. And Ledoux is a fool. A good thing for me, most of the corpos are. I'm a secret agent of the People's Party. We're going to overthrow- I don't want anything to do with it. There isn't any People's Party anymore. There isn't any people! Hush! Don't argue. Listen carefully. Senator Trowbridge is in Canada. He's going to rally America against the Corpos. We're organizing an underground spy system. We want you to take charge in Fort Beulah. Get out of here. I've got enough trouble. You can check up on me through your friend Ed Sampson of Burlington. He knows all about- I don't want to know anything about you! Last week, three leaders were burned to death in Pittsburgh. I can't help that! We're all helpless! The daughter of a liberal professor was raped in Berkeley. Last week, the body of a girl was found in the snow right here in the outskirts of Fort Beulah. Do you think I want to bring that to my daughter? Quiet! Good day, Mr. Dimmick. I don't see much use of your staying around here any longer. Well, I certainly hope you can see your way clear to taking out some insurance. Remember, our company was founded by George Washington. Never mind that. All right, Mr. Jessup, I'm going. If you change your mind, you can reach me through Ed Sampson of the Burlington Paper Company. Remember, Ed Sampson. I must say, you weren't very cordial to him. I don't need any insurance, and, and they don't pay to get too chummy with strangers. Look, he forgot some papers. Are they his? Skip along and catch him. What's this? Kind of funny. George Washington Insurance Company. Americans, are you cowards? 96 sharecroppers killed by corpos in Arkansas. Rabbi Vincent De Dave Rose murdered. Good lord. That fellow. Secret agent of the People's Party, from Senator Trowbridge, trying to badger me into joining them. Well, I'm not going to. I'm too old to be a hero. What could I do anyway? If Fowler with his nerve and, and huskiness couldn't do anything, what use can the people make of an old dodo like me? Besides, if anything happened to me, what would become of Mary and Davy? And, and Mary half crazy the way she is over Fowler's murder. And Davy... I'll have him a corpo general if I don't stick around and use a little underhand influence on him. I'm not blaming you. I'm glad you're being sensible. Ought to get out, get the county agent to write us a big story on Holstein breeding. We got a lot of dairy farmers. Uh, what can I do you for? My name's Beter. Farm up on Mount Terror. I don't knows you'll remember me, but your son-in-law invited my wife and cousin on a picnic. Oh, sure. Sure, of course. Mr. Reader. I've been a reader of the Informer for so many years. Almost feel like you was a neighbor. So thought I'd come and ask. My folks have been on my farm for a hundred years now. Nice big house. Nine rooms. Got a bathroom. We never made much money, but we got along all right. Brought up our family, and they're all married now, and moved away. Well, here, a few weeks ago, the corpos came to me and said, You've got lots of room. And they moved two families from Goose Creek in on me. Well, I couldn't kick on that. But my wife is poorly, and Mr. Jessup, I never see such people as them. Not within smelling distance. They got to my hard cider, and they've been drunk and fighting all the time. I did think some of running the whole shooting match of them off one time. I got out my rifle I kept for woodchucks, but I'm a law-abiding man. I went and saw the corpo officials, and I found they've grabbed those folks' houses for themselves, and I got to keep them. And the woman and I used to have it so quiet those winter evenings, just the wind in the chimney. We're going of a little crazy, and thinks I, I'll go to see Mr. Jessup. Well, it was one of your editorials made me vote for President Windrip. 
So I thought maybe you could tell us. Oh, God, Mr. Veter, if I only knew. I guess we can just be patient. Patient? Well, sorry to bother you. Good day. Mr. Veter, even those Goose Creek brats, you wouldn't do anything to them? Well, I was kind to them, first off. Wipe their noses. But these children. My woman and I have an old lame crow we kind of made a pet of. It was always around the yard. These children took it and tortured it. Cut off its wings and staked it out on a bonfire. I came back from the village and found them. And there was a corpo there watching them and laughing. The American people won't always be so patient. Life could have been pretty decent for us. Funny we never married when we had the chance. Why don't we take the chance now? What else is left? I can't marry you. I'm not a man anymore. I'm a eunuch. Frank Tasbro was right when he killed himself. My dear. Don't blame yourself for everything that's happened. You can't depend on me anymore. I can't depend on myself. What are you two little lovebirds doing? Not to knock before I come in. Well, why don't you laugh? Blushing, my God. I had forgotten blushing had gone out of fashion. Is that some kind of dirty crack? And say, while we're talking about fashion, why in hell can't you learn your business, Lindy? Want to get canned? You've been leaving out half the corporal titles when you write up pink and white supper given by my old ma, Hickenlopper. You write that it was given by Mrs. Corporal Hickenlopper, see? Well, and what's eating you? One of these days, I'll have to slap you both down. And listen. There's a cutie slinging hash at the Buzz Windrip bean pot that would love to be a society editor. Well, got any kick coming? On the contrary, you've persuaded me, <laughs> at least uh, to do something that will delight you. Toll line, please. This is the informer. I want to speak to Edward Sampson, president, Burlington Paper Company. Burlington. What's the big idea? I want to get in touch with your Mr. Dimmick. I've decided to take out some insurance. Lots of it. Good for you. Now we're getting somewhere. And in Lincoln, Nebraska, Mrs. Leonard Minnett, wife of a congregational minister, was killed when drunken corpos fired through the doors of a number of houses. This is Walt Trowbridge of the People's Party, broadcasting from Montreal on the true state of affairs in the United States. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Steel Cartel gave a lavish entertainment to President Windrip. Anybody coming? Nobody. Take this to Dan. Story about the corpos closing Millbury College. The troll's sneaking through the backyard. Doremus, corpos. You all right, dear? Head? Yes, don't bother. Tell father, for God's sakes, look casual. I can't. Lorinda continues a previously abandoned game of solitaire. <sighs> That's good stuff of yours about closing the college. Put a scare into the teachers that are pro provi proving Windrup is a Caesar. Uh, uh, Red Jack, um, Black Queen. What's the matter with you? These men forced their way in. You don't think much of corpos, do you, dearie? 
Ah, let her alone. My old lady would feel the same way if anything happened to me. Sorry to bother you. Yeah. What is it? Uh, what do you want, my friend? Well, came to bust all the radios in this block. Walt Trowbridge broadcasting a lot of seditious junk from Canada. Don't try to fix that. Oh, dear. I did want to hear the smoothie quartet on the Delaware machine gun hour. Crooners. Well, I guess you old maids have your bright moments. Now, now, how are we going to hear the Chiefs straight from the shoulder talks from Washington? And that's it. And just because a traitor like Trowbridge broadcasts a lot of lies, decent people like you and I have to suffer for it. Fall to them seditious Canadians. We'll fix all that after we lick the limeys and the canucks. Uh, I thought we were going to lick the Mexicans. Sure, the Mexicans first, then the Canadians, then I guess the South Americans. It's our manifest destiny, and we need colonies. I wish it wasn't so cold outside. Good night. Wait a minute. I always heard old Yorima's Yesup uh, here keeps plenty of beer in the basement. That's the door, ain't it? I was in here once cleaning chimneys. Beer in winter? I'll get you some coffee. Believe there's some hot in the kitchen. How about some schnapps? All you newspaper guys are boozers. You wouldn't grudge a couple of loyal corpos a drink, would you? Uh, hello, Al. Go forward. What the hell are you doing here? Helping Mr. Jessup. After hours? Now we got freedom. Who the hell ever heard of a corpo working after hours? You might want to know at headquarters. Oh, why? Might as well split with you as the sergeant. I was pinching a bottle of the old man's three-star martel. It's the last one. <laughs> why, Julian, I ought to tell your mother. A lot of good that'll do. Kids got tough since he enlisted. Give me that. Go along, buddy. This makes a third of a bottle we owe you. Hey, I found that. Uh, but you ain't out in the cold. You used your head. And my brandy. Probably the last bottle of real imported stuff in Vermont. Yes, our lives are worth one bottle of your horrible liquor. Well, maybe. Have to think it over. Have they gone? Half an hour, those young men will be staggering. So much the better for us, Julian. Dan finished those pamphlets? Oh, I think so. Here's enough for Miss Lindy and Julian. Got to hide the machine. Somebody lend me a hand. Try to get some sleep. If you start yawning at the office, Shad's apt to suspect you. You'll be careful, won't you? Careful as I can be. I'm off to Windrip Barracks with enough treason to seduce a regiment. Good luck, Julian. Thanks, sir. Night, Miss Lindy. He'll be caught. Sooner or later, I suppose I have to stop him. You couldn't. Not after what happened to Dr. Greenhill. I'm taking the big car. I'll scatter the pamphlets through Rutland and Woodstock. I'll try to make White River. Don't expect me back before morning. And throw the pamphlets away if the patrols chase you, honey. What's the matter? Nothing. Are you hurt? Flesh wound. It, it's all right. I put adhesive plaster on it. When did this happen? Last night, a patrol fired at me. You heard about him. It was I that ran him down. Oh, don't talk about it. Lindy, don't try to leave till I've gone. And Dad, be sure Davy isn't reading in bed. You'll be... Oh, yes, be... yes, yes, yes. I'll run down the driveway without lights. You wonder Julian takes risks with her, for an example? She's too brave. She's stopped being human. Best agent we have. Well, Mary I... Mary under gunfire. You sneaking through sleet to stuff propaganda into mailboxes while I lie snug between my sheets. It takes more grit for you to stay here, acting dumb while you worry about us, waiting and waiting. Maybe. I learned that when they arrested Caddy, the, Benning the Bennington editor, and tortured the poor devil into admitting he wrote my pamphlets. Tortured him while I had to sit here and keep my mouth shut. 
but I had to do it. And I want you, all of you, to do what I did. To go on with this work. To keep silent. To forget me. To revile me if you, if you have to. When the corpos do find the man that's been writing the pamphlets. Oh, they'll never find you. I certainly hope not. They probably will get me. Sometimes I almost wish they would, so I could expiate. I killed Fowler Greenhill! This tyranny isn't primarily the fault of big business or the demagogues. It's the fault of all the respectable Doramus Jessops that let the crooks come in without a protest! I can't blame Buzz Windrup! It's us. It's the good citizens. Yes. We're probably doing our plotting about two years too late. Well, on the job. Let me help you with your shoes. Let me pretend I'm taking care of you. Just once. Before I send you out into the battle. But I want you to promise, if they catch me, that you will testify against me. If it's necessary to clear yourself. So you can go on with the work. Will you promise? Would you do that to me? Yes. If this cause demanded it. Is any cause worth this? Yes. This cause is to help preserve liberalism and reverence for truth. They're being threatened all over the world. America must guard them. I've been reading history, and I'm convinced that everything worthwhile has been accomplished by the free, inquiring, critical spirit. That, that the preservation of that spirit is more important than any pride, any party, any flag, any social system, red or white or striped. I better get started. Lorinda, my dear. I'm going to kiss you. You are not. Just when I've made a hard-hearted secret agent out of myself, no. I hate sentimentality. I try to. Well, another day, another dollar. Got the mini graphing outfit hid in the barrel of apples. Here's your notes and Miss Lindy's for the next issue. Hot stuff. Better hide them good. I'll stick them in between the pages of... Uh, old Dr. Rebelay. <laughs> uh, I just get it out to plague Lorinda. She thinks it's dirty. Wouldn't hide him in a book. First place, burglars always look for money, I've heard. Oh, it'll do till morning. I suppose so. Night. Lorinda? I don't think I'll tease Lorinda anymore. Lorinda. Mama? Mama? It's all right, Davy. Granddad's coming. He's, he's still here. Still here. The next morning. Can I have some waffles, Grandpa? That boy that isn't hungry enough to eat oatmeal can't eat waffles. Want to bet on that? Wouldn't go that far. <gasps> Grandpa, Grandpa! Well... When are we going to have a hired girl again? <laughs> don't you think it's nice to play camping out? Yes, but I don't like washing the dishes so good. Oh, yeah, heavens, you're up early. What's the trouble? We're having a book burning on the green tonight. A what? We're going to burn all the subversive literature and a lot of smutty stuff that's corrupting public morals. Got any objections? You won't find any subversive books here. The hell we won't. I used to work here. How about this book now? It's a detective story. The murder of Roger Ackroyd. What do you mean that ain't subversive? I was reading where there's a commissioner named Ackroyd. Or maybe it was Croydon. Anyway, murder ain't no business for civilians to monkey with. How about this fellow Charles Dickens? Wasn't he a communist? Certainly not. Well, I heard about him. Seems to me he done a lot of complaining about conditions. 
Guys ought to let conditions alone. But Shad, uh, Lieutenant, that was almost a hundred years ago. Makes no difference. Dead skunk stinks, bad's a live one. Found these, Lieutenant Ellison Wonderland and Omar something. Burn them too! Probably seditious. The Lieutenant, really, Alice in Wonderland? They'll laugh at you. Well, I'm gonna have a bigger blaze than they did at Montpelier. Prove that this town is twice as literary. Is Mary up? Why? What's happening? Shad's having a book burning. See any bad books here, old lady? I most certainly do. Lindy. Shut up, you. It's that big red book on the, in the corner. Rebelay. And don't let him tell you it isn't dirty. Pretty right, eh? Maybe we won't burn that one. What's all this? Uh, don't bother, just some notes for an essay. Attention! You damned old traitor! Who's in this with you? Nobody. Don't lie to me! Search the joint! Look for papers with any writing on them. Get busy. What is it, Grandpa? Come here, kid. Keep the child alone. Keep out of here. Or I may forget you did me a favor. I won't hurt you if you tell me the truth. I just want you to tell me. Who comes to see your granddad late in the night sometimes? I... I don't know. They make me go to bed so early. I see. Getting the kid out of the way for your plotting. Where do they keep the castor oil, kid? I don't want to take any castor oil. You ain't gonna take it. Your granddad's gonna take it. Ain't that a swell joke? That's a corpo joke. Giving castor oil to a grown-up. Where do the folks keep it? Upstairs in my mother's room. Go on, get it. One of the bathrooms. He's gilly as hell, Lieutenant. I found a whole mimeograph out there hidden in the basement and a lot of seditious printing. Fine. What do you think you got there? Steel fish rod. Always wanted one, and I don't guess Comrade Jessup will be using this. Here you are, gents. Go upstairs, David. Grandpa! Grandpa! It'll be all right, dear. Better go upstairs. Of course. You know you're going to concentration camp. But if you want to get there all in one piece, you'll start telling me right now who those notes are for. Old lady, you tipped me off to this guy, so I'm going to do you a favor. Box C at a corpo treason investigation. Don't know how to make you out. Always thought you was sweet on the old doofer. Say, if you are, and you know who's been plotting with him, better speak right up, or you'll save him a lot of grief. I don't know anything. He was an old friend of mine, but if he's guilty, he'll have to suffer. Okay. Give him the oil, then. The whole bottle. Hold his nose. Make him swallow. Then lay him out on the table. God. I'd have brought a whip. Hey! Golly, what an invention I've made. Corporals spending money on steel whips when there must be a fish rod like this in doggone near every house in New England. Say, I bet I get my promotion for this invention. All right, boys, lay him on the table. The bookshelves are now vacant. The hole of a broken window pane has been plugged up with cardboard. Lorinda stands in the open door, which has lost one of its hinges. Mary sits huddled in the low rocker. She's sewing a button on a shirt. Beside her is a stack of laundry. But the most startling change to be seen in the house of Dream Miss Jessup is the presence of Captain Shad Ledoux taking his beefy ease on the sofa. David? David? It's after nine. Come right in here. Oh, I don't want to. Young man, you march yourself right in here this instant. Oh, gee. Gr 
Grandpa would let me stay out. David. I'm sorry, Mother. You promised to be home by 8 o'clock. You've been with that Goose Creek gang over behind the tannery. Oh, they're fun. So you don't like him mixing with my folks? Go on to bed, David. Those kids will be all right when I get them organized into a corpo boys battalion. David, tomorrow you're not to wear that uniform. Aw, please. You mean he'd better wear it. It's a protection to him. You wear your uniform. You got one before the other punks. That gives you the jump on him. And maybe I'll make you a sergeant in the battalion. Hot damn! Would you say captain? Go on to bed. I said maybe. Yes, captain. <laughs> Up to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> that kid might grow up to be a captain, even if he has a god, a granddad in the bullpen. Wonderful, the opportunities the corpos have brung to the kids of this country. You shouldn't bite, you shouldn't bite threads, Mary. They say it's bad for the teeth. Mary always did have good teeth. Sort of goes with her horse face style of beauty, doesn't it, baby? Don't. What's the matter? Still standoffish to the corpos? You better not be to me, baby. I'm running things here. Swan ain't been here more than once or twice this past year. Your beard's hurting me. Huh? I guess you ain't used to a real he-man after that overscrubbed pansy doctor. I remember when I used to work here, he was always washing. I don't doubt you found that offensive. I may not be any rosebud, but I've did all right for myself. I've got Frank Tasbro, dumb son, running the factory as my errand boy and I got editor Jessup sent up for treason. Him and his hairy friend, Dan Wilkes, and I got the stuck up Mary washing my shirts and darning my socks. <laughs> and I do love it. You might have some sympathy for working people. You were once a hired man. You had to get that in, didn't you? Once a hired man, always a hired man. That's your motto. Well, I can get plenty of girls, good looking girls with meat on them. I'm not looking for any old sack of bones like Mary. Ha! She's cold as wet What? You can tell her from the sheets. They both smell like bluing. <laughs> he seizes one of the neatly folded shirts and throws it on the floor. Let's see how good you are as a washwoman. Lousy. Hold the shirt again, Lindy. You'll wash it again. Lay it over there. Lay it over there. You ain't got the guts of a two-bit floozy. Why don't you fight me? Why don't you bite me? Who are you to get excited over? You ain't nothing but an old crow. I wonder what it's like to have a dame that's scared of me. Shad Ledoux, you get out of here. Might be something different. I'm tired of skirts that's too anxious. Shad! Look at here! Suddenly, he stops in his tracks. From overhead comes the drone of a motor. Put the lights out! Put the lights out, I tell you! It's an airplane. I hope to God it's one of ours. What is it? It's the Air Corps. More than half the regular army flies are disloyal. They've joined the rebels. The rebels? Walt, Throwbridge rebels in the Middle East. They bombed Chicago yesterday. They've kept us from knowing. Don't show a light! Keep away from that door! I'd forgotten that you could be scared. I'm not scared. I'll fight anybody that'll fight fair. But these cowards. There comes a hollow boom from outside, followed by a flash and a reverberation that shakes the windows. Fell. It fell near the railroad. They didn't hit the town. Come down here and fight like men! Be still, Shad. They've gone now. Killed General Dewey Hike in Chicago yesterday. Bombed right through his headquarters. The dirty hounds doesn't fight like gentlemen. If I had him down here, I'd grab him by the neck and choke him. Get out of my father's house, you filthy coward, and don't ever come back here. Wow. 
Why does she treat me like that? Why does she always look down on me? I love her! Chad! I always loved her and wanted her! And I was a kid selling her old man firewood when she was married to that stuck-up doctor and I used to work here! Chad, you've got to leave here! Get out! She can't hold out on me any longer! I love her! I love her! And I may die tomorrow! It ain't fair! Chad! He thrusts her outside and slams the door. She pounds on the door. Chad! Chad! He pays no attention. He is stumbling up the stairs. No, you don't get any medicine. I'm awfully sick, Doc. If you'd shut up and quit belly aching, you wouldn't feel so bad. Guard! Have I got to wait up all night again? Nah, they'll get over it early. Nothing but a lot of red tape certifying these guys dead. Hell, they're dead all right when we get through with them. Uh, nice fellow, that Doc. He's the one that operates on the men's eyes if they've seen too much. Mike, I don't know how I can take my chance and escape and leave you to these fellows. Why, in this year, you've become the closest friend I've ever had. Jack, same here. I, I wish I could take you just once into Gus's in Waterbury. Oh, best damn mechanics in town hang out there. Them fellows would love you. Uh, say, Doremus, sure you got your overcoat and phony doctor's bag already? Yes, but, but I can't believe... Think of being in a place where you can speak right out without looking over your shoulder. Think of having a real job waiting. If I do make it across the border to Montreal... Doremus, you ain't practical. That's no job for you. You can't wash dishes in a hash house. A am I or am I not the best cleaner of toilets in this whole camp? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's right. There's nobody as inconspicuous as a dishwasher. If I can sneak back into the States. God's sakes, don't let him catch you next time. They won't get me. Not alive. Get out of the way, you bastard! I've brought you a little playmate. Another of you intellectuals. None of you highbrows can take it. It's a damn lie. I did take it. They beat me for hours, and I didn't tell. I did take it. <laughs> Let me help you. Bless you, brother, but this is your bunk. You, you keep it tonight. I, I know how you feel when they've beaten you. I didn't tell her either. I didn't split on anybody. They burned my fingers. Hey! What's all the yelling about? Just tell them some dirty stories. You old chippy chasers make me sick. <laughs> They've called me about everything, but they never called me that. Denounce the sin of fornication, the sin of drunkenness, the sin of greed, and all the while I sinned the sin against the Holy Ghost! The sin of lust for power! Well, say, brother, you sound like a preacher. I was a preacher, once. The name was Prang, Pastor Prang. Good Lord, of course. Why, well, I heard you on the radio when you declared for Windrup. I have made atonement! I have been in seven prisons! I spent Five months in a cell with a maniac who tried to kill me in my sleep! But I cannot pray. I know. Water! Uh, oh. I'd like to show you my house. I, I, almost, I almost got it paid for. You try to get some sleep. I'll sit here by you. By the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. I'd like to see the upland meadows again. How shall we sing the Lord's song to the strange land? Lorinda will be there. 
and Mary and David. Oh, I'd like, like to get my hands on a great, big, long, ice cold glass of beer. <sighs> Dreamus, Dreamus, and get that dog again. Guard, guard, guard! What do you want? Mike, quick, get the doctor. Doctor? Hell, he's up in the commandant's quarters, playing cribs and today. But Mike's dying. Mike! Then he don't need no doc. It'll be all right. Hold on. The eggs, Dreamus. I, I guess I'm, 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 I'm passing out. Now's your time to pray, Pastor. Yes. Now I can pray. Oh, Lord our God, receive this, our brother and our intercessor. Jessup, I'm from Dimmick. Hustle! Pete! Hey, Pete! What do you want? Passing that other doctor out! The Lord keep you. The Lord bless and keep thee. The Lord of freedom guide thy feet in all their perilous ways until we shall both come at last unto his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. An immigration office on the Canadian border. All right, I'll see her. Why don't they close this godforsaken border? I don't know, it's been closed pretty tight. Don't be so damn cheerful. Sit down, what's your name? Murray Jackson, this is my son, Donald. You home? New York City. Passport? Here. Let's have a look at it under the light. Been getting a lot of phonies lately. Nuts. How do I know whether it's phony? Walt Trowbridge's spies are getting so they make them better than we do. I assure you it's genuine. Why do you want to go to Canada? To make a living. I have relatives in Montreal. They promised to find me a job. Isn't there anything left for you to do in this country? Pension. Who's in command here? I am, sir, Lieutenant Peabody. I'm District Commissioner Swan. I have a convoy outside. Seen anything of that gasoline? Gasoline? Yes, not milk or perfume. I'm down to buying it from the Canadians. I haven't been advised of any gasoline, sir. My God, why haven't you? Our beautiful military system. We're cut off. The rebel air raids have wrecked the railroads. If I don't get 40 trucks across the border, there won't be a corpo plane in the air in New England. Who's this woman? Nobody, sir. Get out of here, you. I haven't got time for passports. Wait a minute. I've seen you somewhere. I don't think so. Where are you from? New York. Sit down. Donald, dear, take off your coat. It's so warm. Donald? Yes, Mother. Take off your coat, dear. At any rate, the kid's all right. He's in uniform. That don't prove they're loyal. Did you have a drill, son? With the boys' battalion? He's not been very well. Yes, sir. I've drilled. Where? New York, sir. You wouldn't lie to me? No, sir. Give me one of those carbines. Yes, sir. It's loaded, sir, on safety. Here, you. He throws the gun to David with considerable force. The boy catches it at the right balance, as could only be done by a boy who's had military training. Pretty good. Caught it well, sir. Quarter arms! Right shoulder arm! Port arms! Present arms! Quarter arms! Parade rest! Very fair. Sloppy on the quarter, but on the whole, very good. Who trained you? The captain. Captain who? I don't remember his name, sir. 
Hmm, that's bad. Stand at attention. And you. Maybe you don't remember the name of Captain Ledoux. I've never heard of him. I've seen you somewhere. Have you ever been in Boston? No, sir. Well, uh, yes. There was once for a few days, only... Ever hear of a place called Fort Beulah? No, sir. Never heard. And you never heard of Ledoux? No. Captain Shad Ledoux of Fort Beulah? No, sir. You don't remember how he looked? Lying on the floor with his throat torn open by a pair of scissors? No, sir. Let me see your hands. You've done hard work, I guess. You might have been a laundress or a seamstress. At ease! Do you know anything about it, son? You're a good corpo. You know it is your duty to report a murderer, even if it's your mother. I know, sir. It is right and glorious to kill for the service of one's country without regard to friendship or ties to kin. Hmm. I can see you've learned Buzz Windrup's youth manual. Gasoline transport is here, sir. Very well. Tell them to stop their racket. Secret movement. Very well, sir. Wait a minute. You come from Fort Beulah. Ever seen this woman before? No, sir. You sure? God help you if you make any mistake! Never saw the woman or the brat in my life as far as I know. All right. Get out there! Clear them across the line! Make it snappy! What about her, sir? Oh, let her go. We haven't time for red tape. Anyway, Ledoux was a bore and an oaf. This isn't the woman. I saw her once. She was... smarter. And her voice was different. You're in luck. Wait! Keep the boy. He's got the makings of a soldier. I'm your son. Quietly, she takes the gun from him. Go on, dear. Outside. Put that gun down. Walk away from your desk, Commissioner Swan. I'll let you go. I okayed your passport, Mrs. Greenhill. I won't need it now. Think of your son. Go to the door, Commissioner Swan. Order the guard to pass the boy across the border. Have them send him in first. Just drop the melodrama and you can both go. Give the order. Corporal, pass the boy across the border, and send him in first. Shut the door, David. David, we're going across the border. Take my purse off the desk. Walk to the railroad station. Don't talk to anyone. Take a train to Montreal. Go to the People's Party's headquarters and ask for your grandfather. Oh yes, Commissioner Swan, my father has escaped. Grandfather and Aunt Lindy, they'll be in Montreal waiting. They'll take care of you. But aren't you coming, Mother? When I can. Don't start toward the desk, Commissioner. I'm a good duck shot. Until I come, Grandfather and Aunt Lindy will take care of you. And you've got to take care of them. Try to remember everything your grandfather ever said or did. Don't try to understand. Just say to yourself, I'm Doremus Jessup's grandson. Oh, mother. Oh, dear. And remember everything. Remember America. I'll remember. Now, Commissioner Swan, I am thinking of my son. And I am thinking of his father. Then get it over with. Hurry up. I'm not going to hurry. I'm going to give you the chance to remember. When that door opens, I shall kill you. Look at me, Commissioner Swan. I knew I should have killed Jessup. You couldn't. Doremus Jessup can never die. <laughs>